Dr. Emmanuel Navon joins us now. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we've heard Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas saying he no longer accepts any role for the United States in the peace process. Is this bluster and he's going to be persuaded to come back to the table under U.S. auspices or is he re really drawing a red line here? It is bluster and as a matter of fact, uh, when Abbas said in his speech he thinks the United States should be replaced by the UN as a mediator. Who is the UN? The Security Council. Obviously, uh, their countries are more favorable to the uh, Palestinians. Uh, but the United States has a veto power at the Security Council. Uh, does he expect the uh, General Assembly to be a mediator? With well, one option would be the trusteeship uh, system that exists in the United Nations. Well, the trusteeship system, you know, had been uh, proposed in 1947 uh, in the conflict over British Palestine, but it's not realistic, obviously. Uh, who else would mediate? Of course, he prefers the uh, the Europeans, uh, but again, the only pa the only country that has the power and the influence to leverage both sides in the region is the United States. Well, let's look at who else might mediate. Uh, Israel's intelligence minister, Israel Katz, gave an unprecedented interview to Saudi paper Elaf, and he suggested he'd be happy to go into negotiations under Saudi leadership. Is that an option? Well, if you notice at the uh, Islamic conference uh, yesterday, uh, Saudi Arabia was not represented by the king but by, uh, uh, by the foreign minister and also the president of Egypt was not there. What does it mean? It means that this summit was basically a summit hosted by Turkey, also uh, by Iran, and all the uh, pro-American Sunni regimes such as Saudi Arabia and, and, and Egypt are not in favor of this kind of very aggressive statements made by Abbas against Israel. So yes, the Israel would rather have Saudi Arabia and Egypt uh, play the role of mediators, but Abbas is not going to be willing to go with that. Again, Abbas is also 82 years old. He's very contested. And Sorry, let, let, let's he might just be, be clear. Why soon. would Abbas oppose having an Arab country mediate the peace process as opposed to the United States? Because the today Saudi Arabia is much more willing to cooperate with Israel against the Iranian influence in the Middle East. And when you listen to the uh, declarations and statements of MBS, the Saudi crown prince, but also the Egyptian president, they're much more favorable to Israel and they keep putting pressure on Abbas, asking him to tone down his aggressive rhetoric against Israel. So therefore, Abbas doesn't want their role in the Middle East. But so is the United States. I mean, the United States has also been pressuring the Palestinians as pro-Israel, certainly as Saudi Arabia is. So why would the Palestinians not say, Look, if we have an opportunity for the Arab League, for an Arab League country to mediate the peace process, to use the Arab Peace Initiative as the starting position, surely that's an offer they should want to take up. Well, you talked about opportunity. Abba Iben used to say that the Palestinians never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. I guess for Abbas, the uh, proposal, the position of the Saudis today and the e Egyptians uh, are not good enough for him, and he just wants uh, his cake and eat it. He probably uh, you know, doesn't want to make any compromise on the issue of Jerusalem, on the issue of refugees, where the Saudis and the Egyptians would be much more willing to meet Israel's uh, demands. And therefore, Abbas, with his traditional Palestinian maximalist attitude, just thinks he can get everything. And at the end of the day, the Palestinians end up with nothing. Well, let's have a look at the Palestinians wanting everything. Abbas now saying they're going to go to the United Nations for full-on membership of the UN, appealing to the Security Council. Uh, how much steam does the Palestinian internationalization campaign still have left in it? Very little, I would say even nothing, uh, besides being accepted to organizations such as UNESCO and others uh, where they have a majority, where the Islamic states have a majority, which they use to promote the Palestinian agenda in many UN institutions. But in order to be a member, a full member uh, of the United Nations, you need the approval of the Security Council. And here, of course, it will not happen because the United States will put its veto. Uh, so a full membership in the UN is not going to happen. And besides, even this uh, uh, Palestinian diplomatic activity in many UN institutions has not helped them at all to advance uh, their statehood because, of course, statehood is not only about symbols and declarations, it's also about political realism, which unfortunately uh, Mahmoud Abbas very much lacks. So they might not get membership of the United Nations, but that's not necessarily going to stop them trying. Is there a serious possibility that they're going to revive that bid for full membership and try to embarrass the countries that don't 
support them. They're definitely going to try to do that. I mean, Abbas himself said it. He said we had committed not to promote unilateral actions in international institutions, saying to the United States that they would not have their own unilateral moves. But is it now that uh, the Trump administration recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital? The game is off, and I'm going to promote uh, this unilateral Palestinian actions in uh, international organizations. So definitely he's going to promote it again. He's going to, to do it again. And he's probably going to pass resolutions again at the UNESCO saying there's absolutely no connection between the Jews and Jerusalem, etc., etc. But this is just goes to show his political weakness, the diplomatic weakness of the Palestinians and the Arab world, that besides those statements and those declarations, they really don't have any power uh, to stop uh, uh, the uh, United States from recognizing Israel as uh, recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And I think really this conference yesterday in Istanbul really proved again the weakness uh, of the uh, Arab world. Increasing and of the weakness of the Arab world. Dr. Emmanuel Navon, thank you very much. Overnight, 